Hello everybody and it's a fantastic afternoon from the Migration Control Room or Erie, whichever way you'd like to look at it here on top of the Ululolo Escarpment. I'm Steph Vinterboer and you are looking at a picture of one of, or from one of our river cameras on the Mara River. The Mara River is that body of water that you are seeing off on your right hand side and that fantastic picture that you get over there downstream of the Mara River. Oh, isn't that just lovely? A lot of water, more water than I've actually seen since I've been in the Mara, and that is because it has been raining in the Mao Highlands, where the Mara River originates from, which is a very tropical forested area, a couple of hundred kilometers north of where we are at the moment, about 200 kilometers north of where we are at the moment, and it is swelling the river substantially. Now just have a look at this picture, arguably, A very very complex picture to have a look at let's go through it you've got beauty and the beast you've got the northern crowned crane which is that fantastic bird that you see in the foreground on the left hand side you have got a group of crocodiles I don't even know what to, to call them definitely not a flock definitely not a raft you know as the show is interactive of course you're welcome to let me know what we call a collection of crocodiles but that is a massive amount of crocodiles beached on an on on the sandbank and then in the right hand corner of the screen you've got what looks like a rock but in is actually is in in actual fact a dead wildebeest and let's go and have a look at this picture in a little bit more detail now with you this is the northern crowned crane oh excuse me it's a bit fast over here northern crowned crane and one of the prettiest birds that we find out here. Just have a look at that. Isn't that just a spectacular bird? Crown on the top, they hang around in pairs over here in these like wet, wettish swamplands and eat insects. These grey crown, or these, uh, these, these northern crown cranes, or grey crown cranes, I think I can't actually find which one it is, um, are common in this area. I would say that they're fairly common. I mean, the, big birds are never really common. Obviously, the smaller the bird, the more common they are, with the exception of some stalks in the world. But these cranes you find in relatively high numbers out here, uh, usually in a swampy area and in a pair. I don't know where the other one of this particular pair is. Um, with the exception of perhaps that's what this bird is busy looking at at the moment. In the background there you've got a lot of crocodiles with some of the biggest crocodiles in the Mara River that we've seen in basically underneath this particular camera. This camera is located at a crossing point called Kildesac Crossing, a famous crossing point on the Mara River for pri primarily wildebeest and zebra but I've also seen a lot of Topi crossing here as well. Now let's just have a look at this one crocodile. Actually, has an injury to its face. When crocodiles get really big like this, what happens is they start to f they lose their ability to fish. Firstly, secondly, the few carcasses that they do manage to catch, they are in competition with with the other crocodiles. And what's happened here? Is most probably a larger crocodile smashing its jaws down on top of this crocodile morsel or another. And talking about morsels, Bobby has just asked if these crocodiles would eat the crane. Now Bobby, I don't think that these crocodiles would eat the crane. Firstly, they can't move fast enough. Oh no, we've got a new player in this picture, a olive baboon in the top left hand corner. Um, I don't think that these crocodiles will go after the, the crane, Bobby. It's not really their food source. Big crocodiles like you're having a look at over there are predominantly meat eaters, uh, carrion eaters preferably, and they will catch and kill live prey uh, as often as what they can. Um, the fact that this wildebeest that you're having a look at right now is lying in the shadows is testimony to that. What happens is the crocodiles would have killed this wildebeest either while it was cro crossing or it's a drowned wildebeest that came floating down the river, which is fairly common here. And this, these crocodiles are all full and cold. And they'll be lying in the sun now. And as this carcass gets softer and easier to tear apart, the crocodiles will then move to feed it. And, uh, and I think that's exactly what's happening over here. This wildebeest carcass is either washed up here on the bank or it was killed and left. But isn't that just some fantastic story there? Wow. 
and Crane really doing a bit of a dance at the moment. Anyway, who, uh, without further ado, why don't we send you over to James, who seems to have bumped into a lioness for you.